loud music. Midlife crisis. Not averse to law students tailing you dead? Nope. Cute and blonde, preferably. Nice legs. Got anyone in mind what? Evening classes. Well, I have been complimented on my shapely calves. Please. As long as you promise not to scare the staff. Three months since my last drop. I'm as sane as you are. Wait outside until you called, okay? Oh, you, yeah? Oh, cheers. Cool. Try and stop people entering the court for the kit. It doesn't look too professional. Right, sorry. It's half an hour. There's a, a vending machine in the canteen just around there. I'll call you when they're ready. Are you thinking of standing, Vic? It's a brave man who challenges Peter Mansell's position. A brave woman. Hey, Val. I don't know what you mean. No, I can see Val as chairman, can't you, Eric? Morning. Morning. Come and meet Val. You've sat with these two already. This is Debs. From Astor Dowen. Heard a lot about you. Oof. Don't cross this woman. Oh, I'll try not to. Your court was um, closed down, wasn't it? Yeah, too small. Well, it's a shame, but uh, it could get awkward, too. I used to have the mothers knocking my door at night. Look after my boy tomorrow. That could have been easy. Well, I suppose I'd do the same. Can I have a word? When it's empty, it's like a cathedral. The solemnity of higher powers, waiting to judge. Have you checked in with the usher? <laughs> Ralph and I go back a long way. How are you settling in? It's all right, he's uh, with me. Student placement. Hey, everything good, what? Never better. Uh, we'll chat again. Can I get you anything? Alice. Mineral water. Still. I do know. Careful. They'll do you for criminal damage. And I'll deny it. Won't give me my money back. Best part of a quid's gone in there. Uh, do, do you want some, uh... I don't want anything from you. Been reminiscing? Mrs. Bevan, sorry I was detained. This is my husband. Mr. Bevan. Dr. Bevan. Doctor, if you could follow me. Just had some interesting news from Eric, yeah? Seems I have competition for the chair. May the best man win. Sunday morning, 5 a.m., the window of your baguette shop. Below your flat smashes, you see the defendant drive away. Then the following day, the defendant visits your shop and warns you to keep away from her family. And calls me a whore in front of the glaziers. Right, so, motive for the attack. Okay. 
It's a pretty strong motive. You saying she was in the right? Oh, not at all, no. It's good for us. If the motive was weak, it would be harder to prove. On that Saturday night, you definitely gave Richard Bevan a business card. Yeah, he came up and asked for one. I was giving them to everybody, trying to build up regulars. Some came along on the Monday as well. Only I'd had to shut up shop. Probably only came for a gob. Famous in the rugby club now, aren't I? <coughs> Coffee. Excellent. There you go. Right, Stephen Michael Evans. Okay. AKA Smebs. He's a fiver. I don't want to see an empty coffee cup in his hand, okay? I don't think he's going to be the most stimulating company, so. Uh... Oh, thanks, Des. And if you need any legal stuff looking Just up. Just keep him away, can I? It's just something to consider. What? Give her our money? Love, Mr. Singh is just offering advice. I know. The prosecution do have ID evidence? No, because I'm not guilty. We'll tell them the truth and then we can leave. Am I right? I know this space on that card. Of course I've got other ones. Well, I left my wallet at home. Yeah, I'll call you back. Oh, paperwork. An endless hell. Monthly cost forms. Franchising, legal aid. Can't the lovely Lola do some for you? Writing and thinking at the same time. Well, if you'd picked qualifications over vital statistics... Then working late at the office wouldn't be half as much fun. Hello. Where? Plead guilty and I'll do a big mitigation number, right? The bench will have a guilty plea. Get some out quicker. Didn't it come? Somebody else got the same taste as me. Not a thief. Of course you're not. I have to receive instructions from your wife to make a formal offer. If you do end up taking the stand, your wife is relying on I you. I only ever go out. And then this happens. Irresponsible. But the police phone in my wife. I mean, apparently I was being belligerent. Yeah, I overstepped the mark. Too much beer. But she looks... You know what it is. Not really, no. Mr. Kieran Howells was stopped by police in the vicinity of Lakefield Road, Pembridge, where a car belonging to Mr. James Hughes had been entered and various items removed. Uh, the car was not locked and no damage caused. Mr. Howells was carrying a bag containing five Mozart CDs. Some of the items reported stolen. Thank you, Mr. Meadows. Mr. Davis. Um, five Mozart CDs taken from an unlocked vehicle matching five found on my client. Coincidence? Yes. However, the CDs are very popular titles. Indeed, I own two of them myself. I was listening to one in the car this very morning. And I'm all in Cuba. Lavo, lavi. Mr. Davis. Sorry. It's a shame, isn't it, that in this day and age a man cannot strive to appreciate the finer things in life, such as opera, without attracting suspicion. And as he wasn't seen entering this vehicle, or indeed taking anything from this vehicle, I must ask that this case be dismissed. Possible offer, £800, but no admission of guilt. Mrs Bevan has to confirm. What do you think? It depends if you feel you'd rather put the whole thing behind you. Of course I would. Yeah, then maybe you should accept. Save going over the uh, personal details. If we were blokes now, you'd be patting me on the back. I'd be so preoccupied with the shop, I hadn't looked at a man in months. Apart from my decorator, and he's 72. 
handsome doctor comes my way and wish I hadn't drunk, see? Oh, we all do things we regret. I didn't know he was married. I'm not a homebreaker. I know, I'm not judging you. I bet those snotty magistrates will, though. No, it's not a bad bench today. And you're the victim, remember, not the perpetrator. Unless she's found guilty, I'm just some cheap lying tart. There's no guarantee that they will. Nothing ventured. Let's go for it. I'll tell Mr Singh that his offer is declined. Mr Howells, it's unusual and indeed a pleasant surprise to meet a fellow opera lover in these courts. Thank you. Hmm. Tell me, which is your favourite of Mozart's works? Mr. Howells? Mozart? Which one? Surely you must remember one name. The one you were singing then. The one you had on in your car. Same as mine. What was that one called? On that note, I think we'll retire. Hey, where is it, Ranch? Sorry, there's, uh, there's a guy looking for you, collecting your hire car. She doesn't want to know. Uh, yeah, um, it is monthly hire. Keep it to yourself, eh? There's a problem with the brakes or something. Mm. Right, uh, okay. Do you uh, need a lift home? I, I, have some dinner with us. Uh, Cracking, yeah. Call the two of them out here, Mrs. Bevan. Thank you for the offer, but I don't want your money. I was thinking of us. You were thinking of you. Tell me, was it worth it? And what happened at 5am the following morning, the Sunday morning? I had a crash. I went to the window and I saw a woman get into a black sports car. And what happened the next day, the Monday? I was clearing up. There was glass everywhere. And Mrs Bevan came in and warned me to keep away from her family. I followed her out, took the number of the car, and it was the same car from when the window was smashed, so I called the police. And why do you think this warning about the family was given? I met a man at the rugby club who said he was single, and we had a brief liaison. Someone called the police. Because they witnessed you in the act. Me and Dr. Bevan? Yeah, but we didn't know. Too distracted. I must object to this line of questioning. Yes, I think, Mr. Singh, we should stick to the case in question. Yes, Your Worships. I'll move on. I do just want to follow events leading up to the identification. What happened when the police turned up? We were given a warning. And you suggested, rather crudely, that the policeman should depart. Yeah. You were then taken to the police station. We were. He was as well. Of course. Let off with a warning and at 5 a.m. the following morning a crash woke you from a heavy, drunken sleep. How are you feeling? Ill? A little hungover? No. The police report suggests you were groggy. Not asleep. I saw her and Mrs. Bevan return to her car. Your business is in the town centre, isn't it? Yeah. Pretty lively at night, drunks, etc. Windows get broken. I put it to you that when Mrs. Bevan called at your shop on Monday, you decided to accuse her of criminal damage and that you did this in order to get back at Dr. Bevan, who you believed had misled you. No further questions. 
So how do I get my car back? Okay, your car back. Well, can I pay at the end of the month? Thanks. Community service for your opera lover? Could have been worse with his previous. On the evidence, wouldn't he have been better off pleading guilty? Oh, uh, yeah, he was going to, but I talked him out of it. There's no need to be like that. Uh, here we are. Uh, there's a problem with the Evans legal aid. Your next case? It can't be. I did it myself. Well, I didn't get any problems with Catherine. Do you know that? When's she coming back? Stuff here, then. I put it to you that you collected your husband, you went home, you had a difficult and upsetting night, he fell asleep, you went through his pockets, you found a business card, you then went out and threw a brick through Miss Edmund's shop window. No. I didn't know where she lived. There was no business card. Yet, by the Monday, you'd miraculously found out where the shop was. I made inquiries. I phoned the rugby club. Of course, my husband and I discussed the matter. We got back from the police station, I made a pot of tea, and then we talked it through. I'm not in the habit of going through my husband's pockets, and I did not leave the house. Only bit of fine, Nance Law, banking exams. College. Day release. Never went much. Well, I'd have made brought me the work. Passed the exams, though. When the bank got the attendance figures, they uh, said it had more holidays than the manager. So they uh, threw you out? Oh, aye. Smeps, we're on. Come on. Sorry we're stuck with him, Walt. Not at all. He's actually very... Not now, eh? This way. Your wife claims that she was unaware of a business card for honour roll baguettes that Miss Edmonds gave you. Had you um, thrown it away? I wasn't given a business card. No? Well, it's amazing how accurate your powers of recollection are. Uh, you were intoxicated. Is it possible that you put it in your pocket and forgot about it? No, I wasn't that. What? Not that drunk? Yet earlier you claimed that you were very drunk. Hence your indiscretion. Which version is this court to believe, Dr. Bevan? Objection! My witness is not on trial here today, and the extent of his drunkenness is not relevant. Mr. Singh has a point. I'm only trying to show how Mrs. Bevan could have found out where my witness lived that very night. I wasn't given a business card. Dr. Bevan, you've stated that your wife was in the house between the hours of 4.30 and 5.30 a.m. Yes, sir. Uh... My wife and I had a long and painful discussion deep into the night. We drank tea. At 4.45 a.m., our youngest son came into our room. He's a light sleeper. 4.45 a.m. You have quite a memory for detail, unless this is just a well-rehearsed story. This has been a very difficult experience. My wife has been very upset. Upset enough to throw a brick? Your worships. Miss Cates. Let Dr. Bevan speak. And knowing that I had to appear in court and defend her good name, then yes, Miss Cates, I have tried hard to remember certain details. But I wasn't given a business card, and my wife did not leave the house. She was too busy crying and asking me where it had all gone wrong. Stephen Michael Evans. Charge with cultivating three cannabis plants, you'll be fined ninety pounds, and we make an order for the destruction of the drugs. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Mr. Davis, what are your client's financial circumstances? Uh, he can pay five pounds per week. F five, uh, yeah, f five hundred a week's fine. Yeah, cool. Uh, Your Worship's one of the matter. Um, I've put a, a claim in for legal aid in respect of this case. My client is unable to read or write and therefore unable to read the advanced disclosure. This counts as disability on the form. Legal aid cannot be granted in this case. My request is to the bench. Thank you, Mr. Davis. I can Can you verify your client's signature? 
sign his own name. Yes, but it states on the phone that he can't read or write. Yes, if I may. The signature's on the bottom of a handwritten letter. Dear Clerk of the Courts, I write to ask that the forthcoming case regarding my cannabis plants be postponed because I have a family matter to attend to and so have not yet had sufficient time to instruct a solicitor. Yours sincerely, and the signature. Hey. When I was filling in that form, you said you couldn't read or write. You just cost me 250 quid. <laughs> Why never? I said I was a bit dyslexic. Oh, forget it. Hey, have you got my card? Yeah, don't smoke that one. Does this seem all right to you? When was Des ever all right? <laughs> I suppose it is quite funny. Doctor caught with his pants around his ankles. What? Oh, oh no, no, we no, it's okay. okay. Pretty convincing up there, wasn't he? Good lie, yeah, I'll give him that. Mm. Yeah, I thought he laid it on a bit thick. Well, it's not up to you, though, is it? The evidence is flimsy. And Dr Bevan's testimony was very compelling. We all know why he did it. Do we? Yes. She's not the type. Oh, it's a bit of a coincidence otherwise. She may look well, like butter wouldn't melt, but they're the worst. One threat to their precious little world, and they'll fight like dogs to protect oh, it. Oh, well, we won't bother studying the facts, then. We'll just go with your instinct. No, 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 we'll let her off, cos you fancy her. Oh, please! Oh, Is it on. too much to ask for a bit of objectivity here? Ah, the inner sanctum. Hey, you can't come in here. Well, how much coffee did you give that guy? Uh, five pounds to buy coffee. Fifty pence a cup, so ten cups. <sighs> Literal man, aren't you? Yeah. Smevs, interesting guy. I'm surprised you thought he could. Okay. Uh, Ranjit Singh around? Uh, you can't come in here. Sorry, love. Stuff only. I just said that. Alice Bevan, on the charge of criminal damage, we find you not guilty. You may go. Court rise. What happened? She must have got the sympathy vote. What, what, what more I get? A slap in the face? He's a rat! What are you looking at, you liars? Come this way. But th this is all wrong! I never made any promises. I have to go. Yeah, you could have a laugh at me with your stuck-up friends. We weren't, I can assure you. Is everything all right? You don't really approve, do you? You can't hide it. Deep down, you think I'm a scrubber who deserves all she got. Come on, now. I'd have more respect for you if you just came out and said it. I did my best for you, OK? Not good enough, darling! It's not fair. Oh, thank God that's over. Alice. I will never forgive you. You've undermined everything. I'm trying to make it better. I said what you wanted me to say. Alice. My ex-wife wants more maintenance now that things are going so well for me. 
No one else shall get onto the other one, too. Never get married, Cheryl. Wasn't intending to. Show me one happily married couple. Ranjit? He's repressed. Kath? She's bored. My parents were? What, till they divorced? No, till my mum died, actually. When? Oh, now it's 14. Cancer. It's okay, I'm just saying they were happy. Miss Hesman says she's sorry for having a go. You okay? Got a nip to the office. Got Des coming round. Rather you than me. Line your stomach. Night. Good night. Hi, Mr. Singh. Have you got a moment? Hi. Uh, yeah, sure. I brought this back. It's the money you lent me for the cab. Well, you didn't need to. Oh, you're a lifesaver. And thanks for getting the adjournment. The police are talking to the girl who gave my name. Well, no problem. I know you've got to go. I got you this. For your baby. Uh... <laughs> Oh, thanks. You shouldn't have. <laughs> thanks. Spare me the sympathy. It's just in a day's work. Okay. Then get over it, wimp. It's par for the course. The thing is, I couldn't care less what she did. It's none of my business. You moving in? I cleared up my car. You need to get home and chill up with a nice glass of wine. I never drink on my own. Was that an offer? No. I'm gonna go to the gym anyway. I'm all tense. Come on then. Dinner's on. Here is cooked an extra spicy one just for you. Oh, fake La 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 Very funny. Rowing machine, here I come. I was given this by a client. What do you think? It's a bit OTT. It's OTT? Or a client giving it to me is OTT. Only a cynic would think that. It's charming. Come on in. Peter, you're going to hear this, so I'd rather it was from me. This um, election for the chair, I'm going to stand. Good. Bit of competition never did anybody any harm. You don't mind? No, not at all. Good luck to you. Just being paranoid, aren't I? Yes. Good night. Maybe she does fancy you. <laughs> Don't say that. Des. Are you short of cash? Why, do you want to borrow some? Night then. Good night. <laughs> 